Going through family photographs can get tedious. That's likely why you're here now. Having a bit of a system before you dive in can not only make the whole process much smoother and quicker, but it can also help you avoid the frustration and burnout that can come when you're overwhelmed by the task. Today I'm sharing a diagram that I made a few years back for a client who was downsizing and needed help deciding which family history items to keep. So to keep it simple yet thorough, I created this yes or no flowchart of basically what goes through my mind when I'm culling my own personal collection of family photographs. Hopefully it makes the process easier and more efficient for you too, or at least inspires you to come up with your own version and what to consider. The fact that you're watching this video tells me that you probably care enough about these photos to spend a bit of time sorting through them. And if you, like myself, have become the custodian of your family photos, you likely understand what a treasure and sometimes burden this responsibility can be. Due to their unique and fragile nature, they need to be digitized sooner rather than later. But will you digitize every single one? As you're sifting through your photos, you might find yourself asking what to do if you don't recognize anyone in the photos. Do you keep them? Do you toss the blurry ones? How do you know when a photo is too faded to be salvaged? Whether you'll be digitizing the photos yourself or hiring someone to do it, it's usually helpful to decide what you'll be keeping and digitizing and what you won't beforehand. Especially for larger collections, it's likely that you ultimately won't want to digitize every single photo. By sorting through them before you digitize, you're hopefully going to save yourself time and storage space while making sure that your photo collection remains meaningful and manageable. To get started, I'll pull out one box or album at a time and go through the photos individually. I'll usually set aside two or three empty boxes to organize the photos into their respective digitize, donate, or destroy piles, preferably with boxes that are archival quality for the photos that I'm planning on keeping. And I do try to always wear white cotton gloves to avoid leaving behind any residual oil from my fingerprints on the photos themselves. Now let's take a look at the diagram. Each of these 12 questions has a yes or no answer and you won't necessarily be going through them all each time. We start here and with each photo, the first thing that I consider is the quality of the photo. A good quality photo should have a clear image with no damage. If I see that yes, it is a good quality photo, I move on to the next step, which is whether or not it is an original. However, if the answer is no, the photo is not of good quality, then maybe it's blurry, the subjects were moving around, it could be faded, it might have water damage. That is when I go ahead and ask the next question. Is the photo salvageable? Despite incredible restoration abilities and even the rise of using artificial intelligence to restore a photo to its original state, sometimes a photo is faded or damaged beyond repair and is sadly not salvageable. So how do you know if a photo has reached a point of no return? If the answer is questionable, give it a chance. You never know what technologies might develop, and if this photo has special meaning to you, it's worth saving what you can. But as a rule of thumb in general, if your photo is faded to this point, unfortunately, you likely won't be seeing this image return. If the answer is no, that it isn't salvageable, then it goes to the destroy box. But if the photo is salvageable, I then ask myself whether I have many photos of the subject already, and if that answer is no, I don't, then I'll put it in the digitize box. But if I already have plenty of photos of this subject, the next question I'll ask myself is if the photo is particularly important or meaningful to me. Maybe it's extremely faded, almost beyond recognition, but it's a photo of your parents' wedding day, or maybe even though it's a blurry photo, it's the only one that you have of your grandpa when he was in the Navy. If the answer is yes, that it is meaningful or important, then it goes to the digitize box. But if the answer is no, it goes to the destroy box. Now let's take a step back. If during the first step I determine that yes, I do have a good quality image, I'll then ask myself whether it's an original or a copy of the original. 
You're not always going to know, so don't worry if you're unsure. It's always best to err on the side of caution in these cases, but a few ways to identify a copy from an original might be the edges of the photo. Sometimes you can see the edges of an original photo sort of framing the copy. The photo might also appear a little off-center or grainy. If there's any question, just move along and consider it to be an original unless proven otherwise. And sometimes a copy is all that you're going to get. There's nothing wrong with that. You just wanna make sure that you're always keeping the photo with the best quality. That's the ultimate goal. Once you get to know your collection a little bit better, it'll be easier to spot the originals from the copies. When I first saw this photo, I assumed it was an original. Years later, I came upon this photo and realized that this was actually the original with the information for the photographer on it and all. So I scanned it as a 600 DPI TIFF and replaced what I had with that photo. Basically, if I come across a duplicate that looks like a better version than what I currently have in my collection or is a larger version of it, I'll want to keep that one to replace what I have. So if I know for sure that the photo that I'm looking at is a copy and it's not an original, then I ask myself, is it my only copy? Again, if I'm unsure, it's best to be cautious and assume that it is my only copy. If I know for sure that it's not my only copy, I'll put it in the donate box. That leaves us either with a photo that you've deemed to be an original or a copy that you believe is the only one you have. And in both cases, you'll then ask yourself next, do I recognize anyone in the photo? If the answer is yes, I ask myself if I wanna add this photo to my personal collection. This is where your goals for the project really come into play because if you're like me, you'll save photos of unidentified people in case you later figure out who it is, but you might only be interested in keeping photos of those you knew and loved. If you answer yes, you want to add it to your collection, you move it to the digitize box, but if your answer is no, you'll move it to the donate box. As a side note, I personally wouldn't donate photos of living people. Instead, if the people in the photo or their descendants are not interested in the photos, I'll either just hang on to them or reluctantly destroy them. Let's go back and say that you answer no, that you don't recognize anyone in the photo. As a genealogist, the next question I would then ask myself is whether I recognize the event, the location, the subject of the photo. I ask myself this because maybe I recognize the farmhouse in the background of the photo, but not the people in the photo. Or maybe I recognize the family dog in the photo, but I don't recognize the people. If I answer yes to this question and I do recognize something in this photo, I put it in the digitized box because you never know when a small detail can be the clue to break down a tricky brick wall that you're stuck at. And one of those strangers in the photo or the address of the home on the mailbox just might be that clue that you're looking for. If instead the answer is no, that I don't recognize anything at all in the photo, then I ask myself if there's anyone else that might be able to identify the photo. If the answer is yes, move the photo to the digitized box and make a note to yourself of who you plan to contact about it. If the answer is no, you'll come to the final question and decision. Do I want to add this photo to my collection? At this point, it's a shot in the dark whether you'll ever identify who or what was in the photo, but at this stage, you've determined that it's a unique, good quality photo, and if you feel so inclined, it's up to you to decide whether it has a place in your collection. But if you choose not to, keep in mind that it just might have historical or cultural value, and groups like the local historical or genealogical society could be interested in them. Once you've finished going through the box or the album, you'll have at least one box ready to digitize and to learn what you should know before getting started on that, you can watch this video with tips and tricks. As for the destroy box, I recommend that you shred the photos, whether that's putting them through a shredder or cutting them up. If you have photos in the donate box, my next video will cover the various places that you can donate your photos so they can find a new home. 
Taking it one box or album at a time not only keeps the overwhelm out of the project, but as you're going through it, oftentimes you'll notice that the photos of specific events, vacations, celebrations, holidays, and so on will be grouped together, which usually makes it easier to spot the duplicates and others that only have slight variations. That way you can take those out of the mix and add them to your donate pile. I've also broken down a donate pile into one pile for a local historical society and another for an interested family member because even though she would have access to the digital version that I scanned, she still wanted to keep the printed version for herself. Sometimes you won't notice the duplicates or similar shots until you've digitized the photos and you're adding them to your digitized collection. At that point, I'll keep the best image and delete the others. So that's essentially the steps that I go through before I digitize. I realize that that might seem like a lot to go through for each photo, but the more you do it, the more naturally it'll come to you until you find yourself asking the questions without even having to reference the diagram anymore. Each family photo project is unique. No two are really the same, so you'll want to adjust these questions and steps based on your personal goals and family. As a genealogist, I might have different goals than someone who is simply looking for some guidance on how to keep their photo collection meaningful and manageable. Where I might prefer to keep a photo of an unidentified ancestor, someone who doesn't do genealogy might prefer to pass the photo on and maybe even donate it instead. It's your prerogative. If you're wondering what to do with your family photos aside from digitizing them and what your other options are, I'll be sharing more on that coming up. From ideas on how you can share them with your family to where you can donate unwanted photos. I'll let you know what you can do in the next few weeks. Hope to see you there.